Chapter 7 is all about working with form data. And so in exercise 7.1, we are working with all different types of form data. We've got inputs, type text, passwords. We've got radio buttons, checkboxes, drop downs, and a big text box. So that's what we're going to be working with and getting this form to actually work. As you step through the instructions, uh, step one is bring up the form. This is what it looks like. At our exercise starts, chapter 7, exercise 1. It says enter an email address and we'll see what populates and shows up on the next page. So I'm just going to enter some data and uh, data. Type in a password too. Okay, when I submit, the only thing that's getting populated right now was the email address. Okay, so moving on to step three, open the index.php and review the code. Okay, so we've got the index.php open and we want to note the names that are used for the various inputs. So we've got all of our inputs in here. We've got name equals email. We've got an input, name equals password, name equals phone. For the radio buttons, I'm gonna go back so you can see how this is laid out. For the radio buttons, they all have the same name. Uh, that's how the radio buttons work. Just whichever one you pick, the that's the value that's going to be sent on to PHP. Uh, so that's radio buttons for our checkbox. We've got a name of once updates, and that's just a check on or off. Our select, the name is the contact via. Remember the name for the the field that goes with the select, not with the options. The options uh, designate the value when uh, each option is selected. So if I picked te text message, that's going to pass on the value of text onto PHP. Okay, and then we've got a text area with the name of comments. And finally, we have a submit button down at the bottom. Okay, so that's good for step three. Step four is open the display results and review the code here. Looking through here, we've got, well, we saw that it prints out the email, but all the other fields, it doesn't show anything yet. We've got these empty spans, which is why we don't see anything. Okay, we've got some comments up here at the top. It says get the rest of the data from the form. Uh, for the radio buttons, I do some uh, some calculations display unknown if they don't select anything for the display choose yes or no instead of uh, checked or not checked for the once updates okay so that's good for step four it's just note what is missing for step five we're actually going to add the code that gets the data from the controls on the first page okay so one thing i'm going to do we learned about debugging in chapter 6. I'm going to add a print our statement here on the post data so we can see what all of this looks like. I'm going to go, can I go forward? No. Okay, I'll enter some more data again so we can see what this looks like. And since I've got that print R, it's up here in the, the dark section. But that's good enough for now. Okay, so we get the rest of the data from the form. What do we want? We want the, we've got the email, we want the password. I'm going to borrow the same code. For the password, we don't want that filter validate email, but we probably could use filter validate uh, string. Filter sanitize string. Okay, my autocomplete is not happy with me today. We'll come back to the sanitation, sanitation later. Okay. So we've got the password. We'll also get the phone. Filter input post. Okay, so we've got email. We want password. We want phone. I'm just grabbing these field names from what we have over here on the right side. So we've got password, phone. We need one from heard from. Uh, 
heard from. I need one from for once updates. Let's put that there. Okay. Okay. So once updates and contact via and comments. Okay, and comments. Okay. So now I've got all of those inputs saved. Could print them out. Um, let's see what else we need to do. So that was the first part, add the code that gets the data from the controls, then add the code that displays this data. So basically uh, what we want is a lot of those echo statements. I'm going to borrow the one that's been used already, put those in, phone number heard from, send updates, contact via, comments. Okay, so we've got email, I want password, phone heard from, send updates or once updates contact via, and comments. Okay, we've got this other, these other comments on what we should be doing, but those will come up in the next couple steps. So let's look at what this looks like now. I'm going to resend that form data, and now we have everything printing out over here on the right side. Got the password, phone number, heard from, send updates, and so on. Okay, so we've got all of that displayed. So what do we want to do or that's good for step five. Let's look at step six. For radio buttons, display a value of unknown if the user doesn't select a radio button. So our radio button, that was back in the how did you hear about us or heard from, uh, which means we want to display unknown if user doesn't select a radio button. So I'm going to use a ternary from this for this. Heard from equals heard from, and if so, I use heard from, else I'll use unknown. The ternary operator is a shorthand for an if statement. It's the same as saying if heard from, heard from equals uh, heard from, else heard from equals unknown. Where the first one after the question mark would be this, the second one after the colon would be this section. So it's just a kind of shorthand for an if-else statement. Okay, so that's good for our radio button. I want to do something similar for the checkbox. So we'll say, uh, what was our checkbox? Once updates. Once updates equals once updates. We'll say yes, otherwise it'll be no. Okay, so that's steps six and seven. Let me reload the form on the right hand side and see what we get here. Now I've got send updates as yes and heard from as friend. Let's go test our other cases. So if I don't check the checkbox, heard from should be no, and how did you hear about us should be unknown. So I'll fill in these other ones again. And send updates no, heard from is unknown. So that looks great. Okay, at this point I'm going to take the print r on the post out. I think we've got this pretty well. Let's take a look at step eight. For all fields that allow the user to type in text into the field, make sure to convert special characters into HTML entities before displaying that data on the second page. Okay, I've kind of done that on everything. I put HTML special characters because I copied that previous line. So we've covered this already. It won't really hurt that I've put unknown 
in HTML special characters or no. Technically, I wouldn't have to do that because it, the value is going to be either yes or no. I don't need to worry about the special characters there, but it's not going to hurt it either. So any of them that allowed text input, that would be email, password, phone number, and comments at least should have spe the HTML special characters on it. So what does that do? Let's take it off of comments and try some other things out. So let's say I have a comment that's like, hi there. And then I add some tags in here, script something, um, something bad. Okay, and my script and do something else. Okay, so if I submit that, there's a couple of characters in here that aren't going to work very well in HTML, like this and. We also don't want these script tags to be printed out exactly as they are. When I submit this, uh, you see I've got the and there, which isn't valid HTML, because it just shows up as and. This should be an ampersand in HTML. And these script tags are here, so if I actually typed in some script stuff uh, for JavaScript, it would actually run. And that's not what we want to happen. So that's what the HTML special characters helps us with. It'll convert these into HTML characters and prevent some of that bad stuff. Okay, so if I reload this with the HTML special characters, now it just prints these out uh, and the ampersand. I'll do a few page source on this. You can see the ampersand is an HTML ampersand and those greater than less than signs were converted to HTML greater than less than. So it would prevent that uh, JavaScript from running. So that's what it does. That's why it's important to escape the HTML entities. Okay, step nine. For the comment field, make sure to convert new line characters to BR tags so the web page can display new line characters correctly. So right now if I type some stuff, enter a couple new lines, keep typing, submit that, it all appears on the same line. So let's add an nl to br function. What that means is convert new lines to, or nl new line to br, uh, convert new line to the br tag for line breaks in HTML. So if I add that in there and reload, resend that form, you can see it's printed it out the same way that uh, it was shown in the text box. And if we view the source, that's because we actually have the HTML BR tags at the end of those now. Okay, so that's good for step nine. Test the application in step 10. Make sure it works correctly. We've kind of done that as we've gone along. So I'm going to just put in the ampersand here. Uh, a couple times, and it talked about putting new lines in, which we have. When we submit that, we've got the ampersands and new lines. Okay, and that's it for exercise one. It's all just about inputting and handling the different type of form values. All right, thanks for watching.